I've just spent the last three wintry months riding a Fairlight Cycles trail. Fairlight Cycles is a new brand which was started by Dom Thomas, an ex-designer from Genesis, and John Reed, uh, the owner of Swift Cycles in London. The trail is an all-season road bike. It's designed under Fairlight's proportional geometry concept. This means the bike comes in a number of different sizes, nine in this case, which means you can get pretty close to a custom fit off the peg. The bike is built up to your specifications, so you supply Fairlight with your fit numbers and the bike will come to you perfectly fitted right out of the box. So as well as choosing your fit, you can also go with pretty much anything you want with the bike. And in my case, as I was riding it through winter, I decided to go with mud guards because I wanted the bike to be easy to look after and I don't really enjoy having a wet bum. My bike came out of the box with an Altegra Hydro group set, came with Hunt's 4 season kind of cyclocross all road wheels, and then some really nice FSA finishing kit. So I've spent the last winter riding this bike all over, I've done lots and lots of early morning miles around Bristol, I've done lots of longer rides in the weekends. I also took it up to Scotland over the Christmas period back home, did a little bit of gravel riding back up there. As a kind of all season road bike, it will do it all to a certain extent, and I've pushed the boundaries a little bit with that over the last few months. So the bike's made from Reynolds 853 steel. This is a really good option for long distance bikes where it's not gonna be kind of zingy or fast as a carbon or alloy frame, but it's good at soaking up the bigger bumps. So it's not the most lively ride in the world, the bike, but it is super, super smooth. This has been most useful riding along some properly shit up roads this winter. We've had mud absolutely everywhere, potholes everywhere, seemingly endlessly deep puddles. The bike's proven itself was really quite capable in this terrain. And as well as kind of rough tarmac, I have taken it off-road quite a lot. As well as lighter gravel stuff, I have done some really stupid things in byways, which I've been thoroughly enjoying. I mean, even with the 28mm tires, which are pretty narrow for a kind of gravel bike, it's kind of handled it pretty well. On the subject of the tires, the bike's outfitted with some slightly cheaper gator skin tires, but I've had countless punctures. And in the end, I've actually ended up filling the inner tubes with sealant. Now, I don't know whether this is just because they're the slightly cheaper set or whether it's because I've had some truly bad conditions this winter. I was a little bit disappointed by them. As well as being quite puncture prone, I don't think they're the best handling tires in the world. Having said that, you're not absolutely tied into these tires. As with most things in the trail, you can actually customize how it comes from Fairlight. So if you want some slightly higher end rubber, they're gonna be willing to accommodate you. The wheels also left me feeling a little bit flat. They're Hunt's kind of all season cyclocross wheel set and they're supposed to be designed for some pretty burly riding and I've not had the best experience. Within about three weeks of me getting the wheels, the nipples began to corrode, which is quite surprising given that they're built around brass nipples. And not long after this, after admittedly some pretty rough riding, I have managed to buckle both of the wheels. And as the nipples have corroded, I've had a bit of trouble truing them. Although I've been in some pretty trying conditions over the last few months, you know, it's an all season, pretty burly wheel set and I would have expected far better durability out of them than what I've experienced. The Altegra Hydro Group set, no complaints. I've seen it on lots of bikes that just performs flawlessly. In retrospect though, I do wish I'd gone for a slightly wider range cassette. I opted for an 1128. The bike is pretty heavy. It's not the most sprightly climber in the world. I wish I'd maybe gone for something like an 1132 just to get me up the steepest of hills. And I mentioned, it's not the best climber in the world, but the Strail really isn't designed to be. It's designed to be a really comfortable bike which rides all day long with absolutely no hassle. And that's been my experience. It's a great bike for really, really long days in the saddle where you're just looking for a comfortable, but relatively fast ride. That said, Fairlight do claim that the Strail is the lightest production road disc steel frame set on the market, coming in at 1.9 kilograms for the frame and 365 grams for the fork. This is a pretty odd claim given it's coming from a niche which normally isn't that fussed by weight, but as an aside, my bike weighed in at 9.67 kilos with mud guards and the optional Hope finishing kit upgrade. The climbs are worth persevering with though, because when the bike's pointing downhill it's an absolute joy to ride. It's a very, very stable ride, and I think this may be down to the custom fork I mentioned before. Compared to other all-season, all-road forks, this one has a slightly shorter axle to crown length, so it doesn't have this kind of sit-up-and-beg ride. So when you're down in the drops, the bike feels properly long and low and fast, like a proper race bike should. The bike is absolutely beautifully finished. It comes in three different colour options, red, black, and the best one which I chose, putty with delightful Jaffa orange highlights which match beautifully with the Hope finishing kit. 
My build came in at 2,400 pounds and the additional hope upgrade kit comes in at 40. The bike is also available as a frame set for 900 pounds. So if you are looking for a steel road bike for long days in the saddle with the odd hard effort here and there, this is definitely one that should be on your shortlist and I'm going to be very sorry to see it go. Thank you.